If you are into smart homes and home assistant, you probably are looking for a way to display your dashboards, to push the camera feeds when there is motion or to launch the alarm panel pin pad so you can control your alarm. But the question was always what to use. Today we'll be looking at this 10.1 inch touchscreen. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we start looking at this display, let me first thank Alecro. They've sent me this display free of charge. And by the way, if you didn't hear before for the Alecro, go check them out. They are companies selling various bits and bobs for maybe your future projects. So check them out. And at the end, if you do decide to go for this display, go check out the discount code in the video description and the link. When I started my YouTube channel, one of the first things I did was salvage the old LCD from a laptop, insert it inside the IKEA picture frame and use it as an additional display for my recording setup. Later on, I used the same display to display the information from Home Assistant, but unfortunately that was display only, no touchscreen functionality. During the years, I've tested various displays, small, large, but most of them have been running something or had a very specific use that I couldn't fit in a smart home setup. Yes, those screens could potentially be used for some other functionality, but most of them were not for the smart home use. But this screen may be different. Let's talk about some of the specifics. This 10.1 1280 by 800 pixel screen is really crisp display especially if you will be using it with something similar to Raspberry Pi 3, 4. And what I also tested it with was a Raspberry Pi 0 2W. Yes, it even managed to work with that one, out of box. Of course, due to the lack of the processor strength, it was more of a hassle than a usable project, but yes, I did also manage to run this display with the Raspberry Pi 2W and it was loading up really nicely. And if your intention is to use display with the Raspberry Pi OS, it will work out of box. The touch functionality, even the long hold or the right click option, yes, out of box. The only thing that you will need to install is some kind of keyboard. The installation of the drivers for the keyboard is really easy. There are two options, but I always go for this one here. It's very easy to install. You don't need to use any external repositories to get the functionality working. Plus, when you configure it, you have additional options that some other keyboards for the Raspberry Pi don't have, such as, for example, auto pop-up, always on top, and other things that can make your life easier with the touchscreen itself. In terms of connectivity, we have three ports on the back of the display. One is the HDMI port, the other one is micro USB power port, and the last one is micro USB once again, but this time used for the touch panel functionality. It would be better if those were USB-C connectors, but we still have a lot of USB micro connectors, so that shouldn't be an issue. But remember, you have to power this display in addition to powering the Raspberry Pi. If you do decide to mount the Raspberry Pi, and I tested it with the Raspberry Pi 3, but Raspberry Pi 4 should fit, mounting kit for that is included in the box. I wish the standoffs were a bit longer, because they just fit too snug to the display when you mount everything correctly and you will have issues with pulling out the SD card if you are using SD card. On the top right side of the panel you will find two buttons and one wheel slash button. The leftmost button is used to control the brightness of the screen, button next to it can be used to turn on and off the LEDs, the backlight, and the wheel and the button can be used to change the color change the pattern and control the RGBs. And that's also one of the weakest points of the display itself. Unfortunately, you cannot control the LEDs on the backside of this display via any other means than these buttons. 
it would be so awesome if there was an additional way on how you can control them. Or for example, if there was a dedicated ESP32 or similar board, and then we could probably load WLED or something similar and control the individual LEDs or create our own patterns and effects. But unfortunately, this display doesn't have it. If you're thinking of customizing those RGB LEDs, you could probably try. The whole backside can be removed and you have access to a very thin PCB that holds the LEDs and the controller. Yeah, there is not that much room on the board itself, but since half of the case is made of acrylic, you could probably open it up and solder something very thin inside and try to control those LEDs. I haven't done that so far, maybe if I have time. Let's go back to quality of display. I recently salvaged the Raspberry Pi 3B, which was used to control my Home Assistant instance in my summer house. And I've tested the display with that board and, as I've mentioned previously, 0 to W. There is a big difference in terms of how those two boards handle desktops. So while, yes, it will work with the 0 to W version of the Raspberry Pi, I wouldn't recommend it. Instead, go with something like Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi 4, if you are fortunate and a millionaire and you are able to pay them and find them. I've tested the performance in the web browser by opening and browsing through Home Assistant dashboards. And if you are looking for a display for your Home Assistant that you can potentially mount on your wall or hide Raspberry Pi behind and have it somewhere on a desk as a display slash touchscreen, yes, it's very reasonable to use this display, large display touch panel for that project too. If you are, on the other hand, trying to play the YouTube videos, Sure, you could go to my YouTube channel, browse and click play, but unfortunately Raspberry Pi 3 is not that great with the YouTube in terms of performance and the stock Raspberry Pi OS. If you go with the Raspberry Pi 4, it should run much smoother. But then again, you can also use this display with some other devices, as I mentioned, the laptops or if you have Intel Nook. Intel Nooks were developed for multimedia. So your Intel Nook should have no problem displaying videos on this very nice display. Let's talk about some of the things I wish this display had. First, as I've said previously, I really would love to see the capability to individually control the LEDs, the RGB LEDs. It would make this display much, much, much more useful and I would call it then a perfect display. Second thing, yes, we do have mounting points for the Raspberry Pis, but unfortunately there are no mounting points on this display for us to be able to mount it on the wall. Sure, you can design or print something on your 3D printer and then mount it, but yeah, I really wish there was an easy way to mount the display on the wall, even if you do not run the Raspberry Pis, but instead have hidden Intel Nook somewhere in the wall. In terms of cable and access, the idea to indent the part where the cables go in was really awesome and I do love it. But I wish it was indented a little bit more. If you are using full HDMI cable, the cable unfortunately is very thick and you can hardly bend it so it isn't visible behind the screen. The USB ports are not that problem, the HDMI mostly is. And I also mentioned I wish the ports were USB-C and not micro USB. But that's not an issue, it just would be nicer to have. If you do go for this $109.90 display, which is the current price of this display, I would recommend that you find some custom cables. For example, try to find some very flexible HDMI that would fit on one side to your Raspberry Pi. And the normal HDMI to micro uh, HDMI adapter is included in the kit, but also get a very short USB-A or standard USB to micro USB, so you can hook up the touch panel functionality of the display to the Raspberry Pi. That way you will have less cables and not so much clutter behind the display itself. Yes, unfortunately you still will need two power cables. One power cable will be powering the Raspberry Pi and the other one will be powering the display itself. And get a beefy power adapters because both need a lot of power. Although I did manage to record all of my B-rolls 
out of the DIY power bank that I have for a long, long, long time. Let's do a brief recap. This almost perfect 10 inch touchscreen panel with the 1280 by 800 pixels would be almost perfect. It can be used as external monitor for your laptops, nooks, cameras maybe, but you can also use it with the Raspberry Pi and similar projects. Viewing angle is very large and it makes it perfect for a wall mounting display where you can have a glance on it and see what's displayed on the screen itself. And due to a lot of layers of acrylics on the back side, the display itself feels very sturdy and very well made. So if you are in a market for external display that can be used to display whatever from whatever device you have that supports the HDMI, don't forget to check this one too. The link to this display will be in the video description. And I really would like to thank everybody who is supporting me and who has become YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member. Or you can go to the merchandise store, the link is always in the video description and buying something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have 